This is the start of side two. And we now return to local news with Joan, who will start with sport. It has been a year to forget for Robbie Grabart, but the Enfield high jumper says missing out on the Commonwealth Games due to injury has ignited a new fire inside him. The 27-year-old underwent surgery in May to correct a long-standing knee problem and his rehabilitation work ruled him out of the Games in Scotland and the European Championships. Grabars, who clinched a bronze medal at the London 2012 Olympic Games, admits 2014 has been a tough year in his career, but is determined to come back stronger and clinch a medal at the Indoor Grand Prix in Birmingham next February. There was no real trauma or injury. It, my knee, had just been worn out through jumping on it for about 15 years, he told the Press Association. I missed the whole outdoor season and had surgery, which was a success. I've been doing my rehab all summer and everything is going well and seems to be looking good for the season ahead. I've got some sports shorts. In hockey, Southgate slumped to their third successive defeat in the Premier Division of the NOW Pension Men's Hockey League on Saturday as they lost 5-0 at home to Beeston. Having generally competed well since making their return to the top flight this season, Southgate have now endured a slump in form and they were comprehensively outplayed in this match. Samuel Ward opened the scoring on five minutes and the same player added the third on 26 minutes to leave Beeston in complete control after Gordon McIntyre had doubled their advantage. The visitors continued to hold the upper hand in the second half and further goals from Richard Lawrence and James Gall wrapped up their comfortable triumph. Southgate hosts Brooklands on Sunday. And in Rugby Union, Enfield Ignatians went unrewarded for a combative display on Saturday as they were beaten 22-0 at Dis in London Division 2 North East. Very much in the hunt at the break as they were trailed 5-0, Ignatians worked hard to get on the front foot in the second half and although they lacked a cutting edge, they still only trailed by 5 points heading into the final 10 minutes. However, Dis suddenly cut loose and grabbed two more converted tries and a penalty to seal an ultimately comprehensive victory. Enfield Ignatians entertained Chelmsford on Saturday. And I have a sports item. Enfield Town boss Bradley Quinton joked teams in the Ryman Premier are afraid of the towners after their league clash against Spillericky Town was called off on Monday. Enfield were due to travel to New Lodge on Monday evening, but the contest was called off in, on the morning of the game due to a waterlogged pitch. It means the Towner's last league match was played on November the 28th, and Quinton admits it has been a frustrating period for his side. He explained, we were really looking forward to the game on Monday, but then that hasn't happened. I know it is not really the case, but it feels like teams are a little bit scared of us at the moment. We watched Billericay at the weekend and their pitch didn't seem too bad. I understand the lads want to get out there and play but we have got to make sure we remain focused and train properly so that when we do play, we are still sharp and ready. Enfield will hope to return to Ryman Premier action against Kingstonian on Saturday. Quinton's side are unbeaten in their last five league games, but the Towner's boss knows his players will have to be at their best to extend that run. He said, I know their manager, Tommy Williams, really well from our days together at Braintree, and we still speak on the phone regularly. He knows that we are going well, and that should make it a 
good game. Hopefully it takes place. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I've got a what's on here. And it says, only one week until Panto. And the one being advertised is Sleeping Beauty to be held on the 27th of November to the 4th of January from 2014 to 2015. I'll repeat the dates. 27th of November 2014 to 4th of January 2015. North London's favourite pantomime, it says. All this, of course, will be Millfield Theatre. And the box office is 0208 807 6680. Or you can have www. Millfield Theatre in capitals right handed angle stroke go UK capital letters on the U and on the K Silver Street Edmonton N eighteen one PJ I'll repeat that last bit from the box office. Box office 0208 807 6680. Then www.Middlefield Theatre, all capital letters, dot go dot UK. And the next line, Silver Street. Edmonton, N18, 1PJ. Looks very attractive. And I've got some more panto, unsurprisingly. Uh, this time it's Jack and the Beanstalk, and that's at the Broxburn Civic Hall from the 12th of December until the 3rd of January. And it says here, a panto that's full of beans. And it's starring Charlie Dimmock, the um, TV gardener, um, as Fairy Organic. And also with Michael Otten as Foxtrot and Daisy the Cow as herself, which will be interesting for them to get a cow in there. Um, if you want any more details, you can call Broxburn Civic Hall on 01992 441 946. You can follow them on Twitter, which is at Brox Civic Hall, uh, with the hashtag Spot Daisy. Or you can go onto their website, which is www.broxburn.gov.uk forward slash panto. And I have two items from the chicken shed. The first one is Peter Pan, a perfectly magical adventure for children and adults who never grew up. And that's on at the 26th of November to the 10th of January. Tickets, £11 to £20. And the second one is Christmas Tales, fun and festive shows for children up to six years. Get ready to laugh, sing and join in with rain, deer and snow. Manny and all their Christmas fun and games and this is on Wednesday the 3rd Sunday the 28th both December and tickets are £8 shows at Chicken Shed and Dugdale Centre Enfield and the box office is 0208 292 9222 or www.chickenshed, which is all one word, dot org, dot uk. I would like to respond to David Orfer's letter in last week's edition of the Enfield Independent, where he said, Council deserves a doctorate in hypocrisy. Opinion said, November the 12th, 
to clarify some important points. On behalf of the Labour Party, when we were in government 1997 to 2010, I would like to apologise for using taxpayers' money to build schools and hospitals and invest in people's health and education. May I remind Mr. Offer, who I assume is doing the Tory party's bidding, that back in 1997, we inherited a broken Britain with three million people unemployed, a crumbling NHS and a failing school system that wasn't fit for purpose, but that was in the past. The national debt started to spike in 2008 because the Labour government at the time had nationalised failing banks, examples including Northern Rock and Lloyd's TSB, to name but two. The cost to taxpayers was enormous. However, I want to point out to Mr Offer that if the Labour government didn't take the necessary steps, Britain would have faced exactly the same scenario as the banking crisis in other countries. The people of Britain would inevitably have faced the same consequences Consequences as those countries' investors with 10% cut in savings. Finally, I want to point out that these Tory-led cuts on the poor and vulnerable are unnecessary because it is the wrong strategy. Under the Tory-led government, George Osborne has borrowed more in four years and the Labour Party borrowed in 13 years. The national debt stands at 1.2 trillion and is rising, and in doing so, Britain has lost its AAA credit rating. I hope you find this gives some clarification to the issues Mr Orfer raised. <laughs> Goodness. Um, a letter from Councillor Joanne Laban who is the Conservative for Town Ward and the Shadow Cabinet Member for Environment at Enfield Borough Council. I am writing regarding the locking of parks at night. At most council meetings, few members of the public ever attend. But on October 29th, at the Overview and Scrutiny Committee, where, where we were discussing the Labour Council's decision to not lock parks at night, the conference room in the Civic Centre was full. This showed how important this decision is to the community. The result of the challenge by opposition councillors and members of the Friends of the Parks groups that was, was that Councillor Chris Bond said he would defer the decision and consult with the Friends of the Parks groups and the police. There is no concern in the community that this consultation will just be a show and that the decision will be progressed through the necessary stages in April regardless of the result of the consultation. I very much hope this is not the case. I believe Councillor Bond should meet with all friends groups who are involved with the parks that will be affected by the decision. The Parks Police, the Police Saver Neighbourhood Teams who have specific parks within their area and take into consideration any emails, letters or petitions sent to both him and the Environment Department from members of the public on this issue. This consultation needs to be a transparent process, not one that is conducted behind closed doors so residents can see that the Labour Council is taking this issue seriously. Our parks are one of the jewels in Enfield's crown, and it is of the utmost importance that this consultation is carried out openly and professionally so that the community feel that a proper process has been followed. And, and I have a letter from Christopher Hobbs of Sheringham Avenue, Oakwood, and he says, What a good letter! from Nicola McDowell, November the 12th, suggesting that fireworks be limited to two or three nights only in November. The pretty ones are okay, but the ones with the loud noises are so disturbing. I wonder whether Enfield Council has the power to bring in such a bylaw. Maybe noisy fireworks could also be allowed on New Year's Eve, but otherwise... Let's stop disturbing animals and the peace. A 15th century tower will be restored after a church received a six-figure grant. All Saints Church in Church Lane, Edmonton, has been given £216,500 by the Heritage Lottery Fund. The historic tower was put on the English Heritage's at-risk register four years ago as needing urgent repair. 
The church was built from Kentish ragstone, but patchwork and temporary repairs have been going on since the Victorian times. However, with a grant in place, the Grade Two listed church tower is one step closer to undergoing a full restoration, much to the delight of the Reverend Stuart Owen, vicar at All Saints. He said, I'm delighted that thanks to the generous support of the Heritage Lottery Fund, we will finally be able to begin work on restoring this beautiful church, which is treasured by so many people in Edmonton and across the borough of Enfield. Our grant is hugely significant, but the tower repairs will still cost us a further £100,000. If anyone would like to support us, we'd encourage them to join our friend's scheme or to contact me directly. Sue Bowers, head of Heritage Lottery Fund London, said, Our grant will enable a start to be made on the most urgent repairs to this grade two listed church. This will help to conserve the only medieval church in the local area and contribute to its removal from the English Heritage at Risk Register. The project will also provide parishioners and visitors with much more information about this building and its history. A Royal Navy veteran drew on his encyclopedic knowledge of wartime songs to commemorate fallen comrades. Walter Davy, 92, joined the Royal Marines when he was 17 and served for four years during the Second World War. Mr Davy said, There were long periods on the ships where we weren't allowed radios, so we would gather round and sing songs to keep spirits high through the dark times. Many of the songs do not last the passing of time, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to gather together and remember the people who have died in battle. Originally from Portsmouth, Mr Davy decided to lead the singing at Nairn House Care Centre in Gernot Road, Enfield, with residents, relatives and staff all joining in. Mr Davy said, My father and his brothers both served in the First World War, a war that was meant to end all wars. Unfortunately, his brothers did not come back, but songs were still passed down to me. Leading many of the songs during his time on the ships, Mr Davy, Davy jokingly hoped that Simon Cowell might be interested in hearing some of the former Marines' renditions. He added, It brings back memories of comradeship and the togetherness we all felt. We were a long way from home, but we didn't let that play on our minds, and singing songs was a great way to make each other happy. Mr Davy was given an Atlantic star for his services during the Second World War and led the fellow res residents for more than an hour with war songs and famous songs from the first half of the 20th century. Lovely. <laughs> school children played Master Chef judges as they gave their verdict on new school meals. Pupils at Fleecefield Primary School in Brettenham Road, Edmonton, join parents and school chefs to test out the new menu, which will be introduced this winter. The menu served up spicy tomato chicken, homemade tuna and sweet corn, burgers, as well as vegetarian options such as pasta and spinach tortilla. Fleecefield pupil Kadiatu Jola said, I enjoyed most of the options. I particularly liked the tuna burger. That was really good. Teacher Lorraine Linton also tested her taste buds with the school menu and believes the food was a hit with the pupils. She said, it has gone down really well. Many of the children seem to be going back for seconds, which is really positive. There is a lot of variety on the menu and it is very healthy. 
father, Ahmet Saleh, whose children, Areen, Arid, and Mohammed, go to Hounsfield Primary School in Hounsfield Road, Edmonton, told the Enfield Independent he hoped to see a few more options. He said, The menu is good, but I would like to have seen some soup options. Hot dishes keep children interested, and soups are good healthy alternatives that could have been on here. Councillor Afa Orhan, Enfield Borough Council's Cabinet Member for Education, Children's Services, Protection and Libraries said, Having just received the Silver Award from the Soil Association for its catering in all primary schools, this service is going from strength to strength. To gain the award, the service showed that it uses seasonal and locally sourced produce and sets the highest standards of preparation and nutrition. Catering manager Julia Dowsett said, We try to reflect popular choices for children. Food must be tasty and inviting, colourful and, of course, nutritious. At these tasting sessions, we are keen to see what is a hit, what might need altering and what does not work. So we are very interested to see what everyone has to say on their judging forms. Producing good food for children is an important matter. A hospital is on the lookout for children with severe eczema to take part in a clinical study. Chase Farm Hospital in the Ridgeway, Enfield, is one of five centres in England being used in a study to test silk underclothes. The fabric is said to have protective and antimicrobial properties that can heal skin, but no large-scale trials have taken place. Children enrolled in the study will be put into one of two groups. The first group will be asked to start wearing the underclothes straight away, either a bodysuit or vest and leggings, depending on the child's age. Juliet Guinness, clinical trial nurse at the Royal Free London, which run Chase Farm, said, We need to recruit another 30 children for the trial at our centre at Chase Farm Hospital. And we are sure there are local children suffering from eczema who could be eligible to take part. People with eczema usually have worse symptoms as the weather changes. And as there is more use of central heating in the autumn and winter months, so now is a good time for us to find participants. The trial is funded by National Institute for Health Research Health Technology Assessment Programme. The trial will continue throughout 2015 and results should be available in June 2016. More than 300 people gathered for a fabulous finale to Black History Month. The closing ceremony at Bowes Methodist Church in Palmerston Road, Palmer's Green, saw international scholar Dr. Hakim Adi speak on the subject of black people coming to Britain before the Windrush, before the Second World War. The audience also heard from Zeno Edwards, who read a poem written specifically for the occasion, as well as the Pegasus Opera Company. A plethora of events have taken place across the borough, with students and staff at Oasis Academy Enfield creating an interactive museum for the month. Teachers at Bush Hill Primary School also took on television quiz champion Sean Wallace from ITV's The Chase. Enfield Caribbean Association's Vice Chairman Desiree Thompson George said, It is important to remember that black people haven't newly arrived on these shores. 
aren't here as economic migrants or scroungers, but contributors to the development of Britain with a long history here. This is a wonderful opportunity to set the record straight. Ms Thompson George described the event as fabulous and entertaining and as, a spe- as the special month came to a close. A mother and her children narrowly avoided a serious accident after the brake cable on her car was cut. The woman picked up her children from Waverley School in the Ride Enfield on Thursday, October the 2nd at approximately 5 p.m. But as she tried to brake in her blue Ford Focus, she found the car did not respond and almost resulted in a collision. She was eventually able to stop the car safely without damage to the car or injury to herself or her children. An inspection revealed that the car's brake cable had been cut. Police are investigating the incident and are appealing to anyone who may have seen the vehicle being tampered with. Pupils have been praised for helping to encourage more people to walk and cycle to school. Westley School in Hazelbury Road, Edmonton, was awarded at City Hall for its Youth Travel Ambassador Scheme. Run by the pupils at the school, the project aimed to influence their peers and overcome parental safety concerns around cycling. The school joined other high-performing schools across the capital for the STARS, Sustainable Travel Active Responsible Safe Awards, organised by Transport for London, TFL. Leon Daniels, Managing Director of TFL Surface Transport, said, We are committed to making travel in London an enjoyable, healthy and safe experience for young people. The work being accomplished by STARS accredited schools and particularly London's gold performing schools are inspirational examples of what can be achieved to promote safer and active travel choices. We hope that by celebrating their achievements, we will encourage all London children to travel safely actively and responsibly to school. A fish and chip shop was served a treat as it scooped a prestigious award. Fish and Chips Limited in London Road Enfield has picked up the Fish and Chip Quality Award. The National Federation of Fish Friars gave the award to the shop for the quality of the food it sells and high standards of hygiene. John and Dawn Fantis, who own the shop, were thrilled with their award and will be opening a new shop in Southgate. John said, Dawn and I are absolutely thrilled and proud of our entire crew at Enfield for once again attaining this benchmark award, even more so knowing we are the only fish and chip outlet in North London to hold the award. We have reached the end of our programme for this week. Thank you for listening. So from the team of Joan, Rod and myself, Lillian, with Colin on controls, it's goodbye, cheerio. Bye. Please remember to turn over the address label in your postal packet. Put the cassette into the packet and return it to us as soon as possible in readiness for the next edition. If you are experiencing any problems receiving your Enfield Talking newspaper, please phone Diane de Jersey on 0208 805 6578. She is your listener's representative and she will be pleased to help you. The Enfield Talking newspaper will be with you again in one week's time.